Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today on this installment in our Data.com migration series. And today we'll be talking about traction hierarchies, why you can't and you shouldn't live without them, how you can get instant insights into all accounts within a family tree. Next slide, please. Now, as a Salesforce customer, you know a thing or two about the safe harbor statement that precedes all presentations. And ours is no different. During our webinar today, we may make forward-looking statements that are neither historical facts nor assurances of future performance. So take that under advisement as you make your decisions on any solutions that you're in the market for. We're using a micro-webinar format today, so just 10 short minutes out of your busy schedule to get the information you need without a big time commitment. My name is Erin Wright. I'm Senior Director of Marketing at Dun & Bradstreet. And today I'd like to welcome our speaker, David Nelson, the Managing Director of Traction On Demand. Traction is a partner of Dun & Bradstreet, someone we've worked with for over five years, starting with the capabilities that work, worked hand-in-hand -hand with the firmographic details provided by Dun & Bradstreet and Data.com, and now moving on to continue our partnership around the impressive and valuable capabilities offered to DNB Optimizer. With that, I'd like to pass the presentation on to Dave. Good morning, Dave. Hi, Aaron. Thanks so much for having me. Great to have you. Yeah, so I'm honored to, to be asked to speak uh, about hierarchies for, for your webinar series. But uh, like Aaron said, my name is Dave Nelson. I'm Managing Director at Traction On Demand. We're primarily a Salesforce consulting company, actually. We've been around, I think, 11 years, done thousands of projects. We're almost 500 people now, which makes us um, the world's largest dedicated Salesforce consulting partner, uh, which is pretty crazy. So over that time, we've, we've done thousands of projects, and we saw a lot of repeat requests for the same functionality. And so we decided that we should probably build an app that we can put a ton of dedication around a full team and roadmap and support so that we can provide a better solution to these customers who have the same problems for a cheaper cost than it would be for doing a custom services implementation every time. And so back in 2013, we put our keys on the App Exchange and, and we're lucky enough to have lots of different clients, um, great reviews and, and hundreds of thousands of users now. And so when we went into to trying to create the app, we, what we like to do is dive into what the problems are first that the customers are suffering from and what the goals are for that what would have been a project so that we can create the best solution possible. And, and what we found was that there were about four different things that customers were, were trying to solve for. And the primary problem was that they have hundreds of thousands or millions of account records and they just can't get through populating the parent of each account and the grandparent, the great-grandparent of all of those so that they can get an understanding of, of their biggest customers, which totally makes sense. You, there's no way you can go through that millions of times, particularly when you have all these mergers and acquisitions and divestitures happening so that by the time you even got through it, they would all be out of date anyway. So next we step through what the goals were. So why did they want to try and tackle that problem in the first place? And we found that it was based around kind of four different things. Um, one was just that understanding of their largest customers so that they could, one, provide a better customer experience, have better conversations with those customers that are affiliated with these large enterprise companies, and reporting, right? They want to be able to say, how much business are we transacting with these companies year over year so that they can truly figure out, you know, what are we doing, where are we finding success, what can we do in be doing better and, and where can we expand kind of thing. The other was territory planning. So when they're trying to decide what the new territory should be for next year, they've had hired a whole bunch more people or they have growth plans, should they be making these enterprise accounts a named account? So having one dedicated resource or a team of people dedicated to that one enterprise. And then of course for individual reps where it's just a geography-based model across an enterprise, the ability to land and expand. So to see who else is involved, where they found success, that sort of thing. And lastly, the data governance. And that one's incredibly important and what resonates with a ton of large customers. So when they have millions of records, they have to be diligent about keeping that data clean so that they're not wasting all their reps time trying to dive in and find information 
that's critical for them. They want to keep things running as smoothly as possible. So what we did was we went through, uh, isolated all those goals and requirements and whatnot, and then sort of built out the app. And, and where we found success was that working with Dun & Bradstreet data, who has this incredible firmographic information, uh, originally as Aaron said through data.com and now through DB Optimizer, all of the accounts that are brought into Salesforce are enriched with this information from DB. So as you can see on the screen, you have things like annual revenue, number of employees, the, the members of the family tree, that sort of thing. And beyond that, we needed to be able to say, okay, well, that's fantastic. So in this case, when you can see Geico, we now know how big they are and uh, where they're located with address. But we want the context of who else are they affiliated with that we're also doing business with. And for that, we use the relationship information from DMB through now Optimizer. So when every account's enriched that firmographic, they also find out who the parent is, and who the domestic is, and the global ultimate. And so we were able to then build out this app automatically to link all those accounts together to give a better kind of customer 360 and allow them to do that territory planning and the data governance. So I think what will work best is actually dive into a, a live demo. So I'm going to flip my screen over here, and hopefully the WebEx shows the same thing. So you should be seeing the same screen as I was showing in the slideshow there. And I'm going to scroll down to show you how our app actually works. And so what I hope you're seeing now is that we've immediately run through all of the accounts in this Salesforce environment, used that DMB relationship data to link all those accounts together so they didn't have to go through and manually populate that for a million records. So as soon as you turn the app on, it gives you this display to say all the accounts that are related. And so what you can see is that now Geico, which was a large enough corporation as it is, is actually part of Berkshire Hathaway. And that Berkshire Hathaway has is one of the biggest companies on the planet, has lots of disparate companies that are in different industries, different geographies that we, you would have had no idea were affiliated. And then on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see all of your sales information. So you can see who are the players involved at your company, so who are interacting with these companies. What are the products that they've sold? How much money have they closed already? And what's open an opportunity? So that in a named account model, you can see what is going on. And in a non-named account model, in a geography situation, you can see everyone that's involved, and you can use that information to help kind of broker introductions to different levels in the family tree and try and expand that business. And all of it's customizable because sales reps are going to want to be able to see things like the sales information, but your data governance team and your sales ops teams may want to focus primarily on your address data. And so all of it can be changed on the fly or set up ahead of time based on each of those profiles. So if you wanted to see more billing information, you can do that by just updating it like that, and it'll redraw the tree to show that updated information. Now, so that helps give an immediate understanding of that company. And beyond that, you can also do things like show related records, so opportunities, so that all of a sudden you can show all of the opportunities across all of those accounts so you can see what's happening in there and all of the contacts, likewise, to give that better understanding, have a better customer experience so that you don't have to dive into each individual record to go find that. Immediately you can see what's happening and who's involved. So that's helping companies immediately do things like reporting and get a better understanding. But in order to be able to expand their footprint across that, they also need to be able to do things like see what's outside the family tree. Who are we not doing business with that we should be? And so for that, we have this white space button, which is now going to provide us with a visibility into the external world of this company. And so although we've done a great job, we've got about 100 accounts in our Salesforce organization, there's over 7,000 accounts globally. And I'm going to trim that down to headquarters just in the interest of time here. And it's going to show me all those accounts that exist outside of our Salesforce environment and reconcile it against those that we do. So that now you're not creating dupes, you can see which ones you've done business with, those that have a colored icon and they're clickable, and then those that you haven't, which are kind of grayed out, which we refer to as that uh, inferred account. You can then click to bring in and you can filter it down to say, well, we're really only interested 
in those that have over a million dollars in revenue or 250 employees or, or something, whatever it makes sense for your business. So that helps to give a better understanding for your sales management team to say what's the potential for expansion so they can set better targets and for an individual sales rep to be able to then expand into other areas. Now beyond that, I use Berkshire Hathaway as an example because sometimes sales organizations don't actually sell into holdings companies like Berkshire Hathaway the same way that they do into uh, GEICO, the insurance company is the individual entity, or Benjamin Moore Paints, and that they want to actually be able to split those out into their own family tree. So the app allows you to do that as well, which then gives a separate hierarchy ID and a separate reporting ID so that now you can actually report on it, sell into it, and assign it to different reps based on your go-to-market. Now the important part is that the automation is still intact. So we split it out. It's immediately brought all of those subsidiaries with it. But that now if I go ahead and create a subsidiary of GEICO, it's going to be brought into this hierarchy and not that Berkshire Hathaway hierarchy. And that's important so that we're still maintaining that, you know, if you have a million records, you can't go through and do it manually. So in this case, it's collected them all, but then you can easily separate out those individuals that you treat differently. So that was a very, very quick overview. I think I went over 10 minutes, sorry about that. But um, maybe I'll pass it back to Aaron and open it up for questions here. Thanks, Dave. That was great. From a marketing perspective, I'd love uh, to see this work uh, for ABM. This would be incredibly helpful. So I've got a couple questions this morning. And the first is, uh, when it comes to budget allocation, what departments do you recommend invest in this tool? Oh, good question. Um, it's funny. Traditionally, we've always seen sales and sales ops be focused on the hierarchies because they've been doing account-based selling for decades. Recently, I'd say in probably the last like nine to 12 months, we've seen a lot more marketing departments become interested. And for that purpose, you just mentioned account-based marketing. So uh, a lot of organizations are now going down the path of account-based marketing, and they need to be able to understand these large hierarchies, these large enterprise businesses, so that they can then run these campaigns effectively across all the subsidiaries as well. And so now it's, it's broadening that spend across both sales and marketing or sales ops and marketing ops budget. So it really depends on the business, but that can help for certain organizations. Great, thanks. And the second one, kind of timely given all the mergers and acquisitions going on, when there is a merger or an acquisition, do I need to manually link them? No, no. Um, Dun & Bradstreet, through their optimizer functionality, keeps all of that information up to date. So let's say, in this case, GEICO bought another insurance company. Optimizer then updates that information in the DMB database, which then gets updated in their relationship information. And so with our app, when it's uh, building out those hierarchies regularly, so we have like a regular job that's updating those, it'll immediately get reflected as a change as soon as that data is populated and updated in the database so that you don't have to do it manually and you actually you can set it up so you get a notification as well when it happens. Great. So Dave, if you could take us over to that last slide. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I'll switch back here. I just want to say thank you to everyone on the call today who's joined us. And there's a couple ways to find out more information. You can learn more information about Traction on their website at tractionhierarchies.com. If you have a specific question for Dave, you'll see his email address there on the screen, dnelson, tractionondemand.com. And then finally, as you're considering your migration path from data.com and want to take advantage of all of this excellent hierarchies um, capabilities offered, you can move right over to DNB Optimizer and you'll see we have our website there, dnb.com backslash data.com replacement, where you can learn more about how to make that happen. Thank you all for joining us today, and thank you, Dave, for participating. It was great to have you, and I look forward to hearing from you all soon. Thank you so much. Thanks, Richard.